All right, so we're going to take a minute. And we're going to look at an example with two masses being pulled over a pulley. Um, this one is on a smooth incline, so we're going to assume that there's no friction. Okay, the pulley is also frictionless and massless. The string we're going to assume is massless as well. And so all we're going to worry about is these two masses and their acceleration. The question asks for the acceleration of the two masses and the tension in the string. We'll actually end up solving for those about the same time. The first thing that we need to realize is that as it's accelerating, it'll accel either accelerate in this direction, okay, going that way, which means that this mass will go up and that mass will go down, or it can be accelerating in the other direction. Okay, to simplify things, we're going to say that anything going in this direction is going to be positive, and so that's going to be a positive acceleration. Now that works out nicely in this example because that means to the right will be A and up will be acceleration of this one. They both have to be accelerating at the same rate since they are attached to the same string. So what we're going to do now is let's go ahead and draw a force diagram for each of the two objects here. So let's start with the mass right here hanging at the end of the string. Okay, so the one at the end of the string is 10 kilograms. Okay, so let's draw a force diagram for that one, which is going to look like this. The only forces acting on it are the force of gravity, which is going to be 9.81 times its mass, which was 10 kilograms. Okay, so 98.1 newtons, and that's going pulling downwards, right, with respect to our pulley, so that's going to be a negative 98.1. All right, then we have the tension in the string, which we don't know what that is yet, and so we'll find out what that is. The acceleration is going up, which is going to be in the positive. We're going to assume that maybe it's going this way. Maybe it's pulling down, okay, but this is going to be a positive acceleration going this way to cause the pulley to turn clockwise. Okay, so now let's go over and let's look at the other mass. Okay, the other mass, I'm going to start right over here because we don't want to use our typical x and y axes, right? We're going to tilt it, so it's going to look something like this. So there's my x-axis and my y-axis. I know that the angle of, this, of the incline is 30 degrees. Since the angle of the incline is 30 degrees, that means that the y used to be here, right, straight down, there's the force of gravity, and so when I tilt my axis, this is going to be 30 degrees, okay? So that will be helpful when I go over here and draw a force diagram on my block, okay? So on my block, we have two forces working on, or three forces working on the block, right? We've got the force of gravity, which isn't straight up and down, right, because we're going to tilt our axis. So the force of gravity is actually pulling over in this direction, Okay, which is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration, right? So mass, which is 5 kilograms, times the acceleration, which is 9.81. So 9.81 times the mass, which is 5, so that's 49.5. Now that is going to be right here, 49.05. Okay, and then we've got the normal force, which is going to point straight up perpendicular to the surface. Once I've tilted it, that's going to be going straight up, right? Because that's going this direction right here. So that's the force of the normal. And then we've got the tension, which is going to be pulling back in this direction, which is along the negative x-axis. So there's the tension. Okay, so now we've got the two force diagrams drawn out. And we can then go ahead and try to solve for the missing pieces of information. So. Uh, we don't know what the acceleration is, but we do know that there is acceleration. So let's draw out, let's write out our equations. Sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration, which means the force of gravity here plus the tension is going to equal the mass of this block right here, the 10 kilogram, uh, the, the circular, circular one hanging, 
times its acceleration, which we don't know what that is. So those are both unknowns. This is the 10 kilogram mass. Okay, now we go over to the 5 kilogram mass, and we're going to write two equations, one for the horizontal direction and one for the vertical direction, because we can't just do it all together because they're going in different directions, and we know that we can't add vectors that way. So let's go ahead and do the horizontal direction first. So the horizontal direction is where we have the acceleration, but that's going to be the tension plus the force of gravity in the x direction, which since this right here is my 30 degree angle, right? If we look at our drawing here, that's where it was between the y-axis, our new y-axis, and the force of gravity. So that's 30 degrees, and we're looking for the x, so that's going to be the sine, so that will be the overall force of gravity times the sine of 30. Okay, so those are my two horizontals, equals the mass times the acceleration. Okay, I do have the mass, that's 5 kilograms, but acceleration and tension are still unknowns. Now, if I look in the y direction, I can say that my normal force is e plus the force of gravity in the y direction, which will be Fg cosine of 30, will equal mass times acceleration in the y direction. Now, my acceleration here is all in the x direction. You'll notice that it's a horizontal component, which means that my acceleration in the y direction is 0. Okay? So if the question was asking for the normal force, I could solve for that right now, because I know the force of gravity, and I could solve for that. But that's not what it's asking for. It's looking for the force of uh, the tension and the acceleration. And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use these two equations right here that we already have. So we're going to use these two, and we're going to have to do simultaneous equations. Okay. Now, an important thing to note is that this tension right here is positive because it's going up. Okay, It's going to cause that pulley to go clockwise. The tension on this one right here has to be negative, right? So if I want these tensions to mean the same thing, then I'm going to have to put a negative in front of this one to show that I understand that that's pulling in the opposite direction, which would make my pulley go counterclockwise, okay? The force of gravity in the x direction, okay, interestingly enough, is in the positive direction. Okay, so when I figure that out, this needs to be a positive number, okay, because that positive number will balance with this negative one to give me the acceleration that I want. Okay, so it's very careful, it's very important that we're careful and we consider the directions of each of our forces. Here the tension is up, which is in the direction of our positive acceleration going this way, and then the force of gravity is going down, which is going to cause the pulley to go the other direction. Okay, so that's how we use the idea of the pulley going in the same direction because we want these two tensions to mean the same thing, to be the same number. If the tension in the rope is 5 newtons, this would be a positive 5 newtons, this would be a negative 5 newtons. So now we can go and we can solve. We can solve for one of the variables and then get the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and this one right here and solve for the tension. So we're going to say the tension is equal to I'm going to take that force of gravity and move it to the other side. It was negative 98.1, so we're going to add 98.1 to each side. So 98.1 plus the mass, which is 10 kilograms there, times the acceleration. Okay, so now I should be able to take that and put it into my equation over here, right? And so let's rewrite this equation with this being my tension. So it's negative 98.1 plus 10 times the acceleration, plus the force of gravity on this block, which is 49.05 sine of 30, equals the mass of this block, which is 5, times the acceleration. And so from there, we can work that out algebraically. Okay, so this will be negative 98.1 minus 10a. So let's add 10a to both sides, and then we'll add the, we'll multiply this one right here. So 49.05 sine 30. So 49.05 sine of 30. Okay, and then we're going to subtract the 98.1 
which will give me a value of negative 73.57. So negative 73.57 equals, that 10a was negative, I'm going to add that to the other side, so that will give me 15a. Divide both sides by 15, and I get an acceleration of negative 4.9 meters per second squared is equal to the acceleration. Okay, so there's the acceleration, negative 4.9. So that just means I had assumed that the acceleration was positive going in this direction, which means that it's not going to be going in this direction. It's going to be going the other direction. So my acceleration is actually going to have my, make my pulley turn to the counterclockwise direction. Acceleration is negative 4.9. I can plug that in. I can now find the tension. And so I'm going to go 98.1 plus 10 times negative 4.905, and we get 49.05 is the tension. And that's the tension both here and here, because it's the same string, so it has to have the same tension everywhere, as long as this, this pulley is frictionless. Okay, so I hope that example was helpful. Um, if you need a little bit more help, come ask me, or drop in, or uh, send me an email, and I will gladly help you out. Talk to you later.